Joanna Moore, Chief Exec of Museums Gallery Scotland, who's hosting this event today. We've organised it. Um, we've had some support from Creative Scotland and some support from the British Council. Um, I'm saying we've organised it, but we've developed this, um, this programme in partnership with TRACS, Traditional Arts and Culture Scotland. So we've been, we've been hatching the plot for a long time. So we're very, very happy to be here today and to see the culmination of a lot of planning and a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication um, to, to bring about this opportunity for discussion, debate, and to hear some of the, I think I can say, great thinkers in the world today on the subject we'll be discussing. Before we get started, I just need to say there are no planned fire drills today, so if the alarm does go off, can you please make your way to the nearest exit? So welcome to the Symposium on Intangible Cultural Heritage. We're very proud to host this event, and it is the first of its kind in the UK, so it's a very momentous occasion. We're very lucky to have an incredible group of people and distinguished guests um, together with us in this room today. And we're very, very excited about what we can achieve today, um, and we hope that we'll, there'll be a very strong legacy. We're capturing um, the narrative of the day. Um, we are being live streamed uh, and we've got listeners around the world. So welcome to our online listeners. And we will be taking questions from our online listeners throughout the day. So what do we want to achieve? Um, we've organised the event as the area of ICH has been a focus for, a number, for us for a number of years. And we began our work in this area in response to requests from museums who were dealing with the intangible as well as the tangible aspects of Scotland's culture. It was part of a lot of our museums day to day. And that request has prompted our work on ICHScotland.com, our online inventory of Scotland's ICH. And I know that many of you have already contributed to the website but can I urge you to please um, visit the site and continue to add information. You are the people who will make that inventory come alive, so it's really important that we continue the momentum and continue to add. We've revamped that site so it's much more user-friendly, much more accessible. So today is very much an opportunity to take our work in ICH a step further with the help of our international guests. Um, we have UNESCO here today, very proud to... Uh, to welcome UNESCO as a participant in today as well as a speaker. This is very much a chance to underline the fusion between the museum sectors and other cult parts of the cultural sector. So conversations that can be had through this bridge of ICH and the areas common to both our work can be expanded upon and hopefully be um, a platform for collaboration partnerships going forward. But it's also an exciting opportunity for us to consider ICH's relationship to identities, sustainable community development, and human rights. So that's the focus of today. And we've got a dynamic lineup of truly inspirational speakers who will tell us about their work in the area of ICH. And in a workshop after lunch, we will gather your thoughts in this area and we'll create a paper as well as a film. So it'll be a legacy film today as well as it all captured online and um, continue to stay online. But we're also hoping to present a small paper um, that we will take to Namibia to the Intergovernmental Committee and the ICH NGO Forum to be able to present some of the findings of the thinking from today. So your input today is going to inform global thinking about ICH. That's what today is about. So hopefully we're working quite hard today. So the discussions are not limited, as I said, within these walls. We're welcoming everybody who is watching online now and we're involving Twitter followers in the conversation. And we'd like you to do the same. If, you have a, um, if you're on Twitter, the hashtag for today is hashtag ICH number four, everyone. Okay, got that? Tweet away, please. Um, and that will include more people in that conversation. It's not all hard work today. Throughout the day, you will be treated to some beautiful and unique performances, examples of Scotland's living culture. We will be taking the questions today with, uh, for all of our speakers. We've got a, a roving mic for those of you in the room, so please use the mic, otherwise our online followers will not be able to hear your question. 
For those following the action online, if you could also pose your questions to our speakers, just use the forum to ask the questions. Type these as they come to you, and we will have them gathered, and we'll read them out in the Q&A session. So this is truly a global event. So I am very pleased now to introduce um, our Cabinet Secretary for Culture and External Affairs, Fiona Hismop. And the, the Cabinet Secretary has demonstrated great support for ICH for so many years now, and I'm delighted that she's been able to take the time out of her busy schedule to be here this morning. Fiona. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and a particular welcome to our visitors um, from other countries. If you came yesterday, you'd have seen our beautiful city in all its awesome glory. If you've just arrived today, I'll introduce you to a good Scottish word, Zich. This is a Drich day, it's dull, it's grey, uh, but uh, it's uh, great to have you here with us. And I think uh, despite the dullness and the greyness outside, I'm sure the brightness of your thinking will help illuminate the discussions and the debates and the outcomes from today's conference. Um, I, I'm really pleased to be here. I was very keen to help support um, this event and the Intangible Cultural Heritage Symposium organised by Museum Gallery Scotland. Uh, which is the first uh, event of its kind to be held in the UK. And to see that we're joined by so many national and international intangible cultural heritage practitioners, professionals from the museum sector and academics, eager to learn and eager to share their knowledge and contribute to the international exchange and dialogue which is taking place on such an important issue. Today's conference provides a real opportunity for all present to further understanding, knowledge and thinking around intangible cultural heritage, reflecting on traditional customs and practices, while the event will also provide more opportunities for collaboration in the sector. I am passionate about Scotland's culture and heritage, and Scotland possesses a wealth of living traditions. It is steeped in meaning and history, but continually evolving. I believe that in order for us to be able to move forward as a nation, we must both acknowledge our roots and recognise the value and essential role that intangible cultural heritage plays in defining and shaping our national identity, our sense of belonging, our stories as individuals and our stories as communities. And the intangible is a critical part of how we actually perceive, appreciate and experience our rich cultural heritage binding and connecting us to our past, our present, and shaping our future. And it's therefore vital uh, that we nurture and preserve this legacy and unique intangible aspects of our cultural heritage. Our heritage are our stories uh, of all of us, and intangible heritage is the storytelling of all of us. We have a wealth of stories to tell that make different, take different forms, as diverse as this land, as its people, and indeed its weather. So many intangible aspects of our culture define us and evoke our sense and collective memory of Scotland. To only mention a few, uh, the internationally renowned Edinburgh Beltane Festival, which celebrates the cyclical nature of the seasons and human connections to the environment. Um, the recent uh, fire festival in Edinburgh, uh, just last week, which follows the idea of the overthrowing of summer by winter, with a standoff between the summer and the winter kings. Shetland Vikings Uphelia Fire Festival, held annually to mark the end of the Euler winter season. And also the walking songs, the mod, the Gaelic mod, the Burnsong festivals, such as Robert McClellan and the Pitoim Arts Festivals, are a few examples of what we should consider in terms of telling the story of Scotland. The Glasgow 2014 cultural programme for the Commonwealth Games um, also provided an unprecedented programme of intangible cultural heritage activity, featuring works by Scottish and international artists. There was a unique collaboration that really captured my imagination and spoke to me about Scotland and indeed the world. It was a collaborative performance called Bo The Boomerang, uh, which took place in July last year and for the first time in Scotland on the Isle of Lewis. And it was an example of a trying out a nation in tangible cultural heritage project involving 21 artists and four festivals. And it was a born out of a desire to explore and to celebrate similarities between Gaelic and Aboriginal and Maori cultures. 
Uh, the performance presents the best of Scotland's tangible and intangible culture alongside of the, uh, of the Commonwealth. And it was very much about the traditions of the past, but also about the fusions that came between nations, but also then about the new work and new storytelling. But safeguarding our knowledge of intangible cultural heritage practice is paramount. And we need to recognise the diversity of heritage practices in Scotland and understand the benefits that this brings to individuals and communities. And it's important to recognise the contribution that culture and in particular intangible cultural heritage makes to those communities, the connection between people and importantly places. It helps enrich and shape and provide that sense of um, identity to our communities. Uh, just like the museums and galleries who preserve and care for the collections, it's essential that we ensure that the tangible aspects of our cultural heritage are preserved and remain visible, and the intangible cultural heritage is recorded, preserved and shared. I think some of the challenges we have in this area is about the sharing and how we can share that intangible cultural heritage. Uh, one of the key issues, um, clearly, in regard to intangible cultural heritage is the potential risk of loss of traditions and collective memory. Education is an important vehicle through which our knowledge uh, of ICH practices can be transmitted to our children and young people and therefore to the next generation. And we must encourage communities and individuals within those communities to become active participants in this process by enhancing their collective memory. And I commend Museums Gallery Scotland, uh, which has recently redeveloped the website of Scotland's inventory for intangible cultural heritage, launched in July of this year, uh, which will record all intangible cultural activities in Scotland. And it will provide the opportunity to appreciate the scale of intangible cultural heritage in Scotland and to acknowledge its diversity to preserve and promote our cultural practices and our living traditions for this and the next generation. And in terms of cultural heritage in Scotland covers practices that reflect the broad range of Scotland's cultural sphere. Oral traditions and expressions, performing arts, social practices, traditional craftsmanship, so I've just been talking about boat building with our colleague from the Scottish Maritime Museum, uh, a very exciting and, and new develop, uh, but also rituals and, as I said, uh, festive events. And as you know, whilst the UK has not ratified, is not a state party to the 2003 Convention for the Safeguarding of Intangible Cultural Heritage, Scotland's cultural uh, policies have embraced the concept of intangible cultural heritage and framework of the Convention, supported by Museums Galleries Scotland and local authorities across Scotland. And I have formally requested the UK sign the Convention in writing and in meetings with previous UK government ministers and will continue to do so with their successes. I should be aware, MGS, thank you very much for that support. It's just what we do because we believe it in Scotland, but I'll, I'll work on them. We'll see what we can do. Uh, MGS has invested and contributed to the ongoing research and development of a national inventory of intangible cultural heritage, as we've heard, to record those traditions, the knowledge, the cultural and living practices residing in communities across Scotland. And the MGS National Strategy for Scotland's Museum and Galleries and Historic Environment in Scotland's Our Place and Time, our first um, uh, um, strategy from Scotland on our heritage, both express the government's commitment and continued support for intangible cultural heritage. So it's important that it's shared across all the different strategies we have for our museums, but also for our heritage bodies. And our role in government is to support those organisations that already engage with intangible cultural heritage, whatever they actually call it, whether that is Creative Scotland supporting the traditional arts, music and storytelling, Events Scotland supporting a common riding, and colleagues might be able to explain that to you, our visitors, uh, our National Library uh, promoting Scots or Gaelic literature, or Historic Environment Scotland supporting historic placemaking. The Scottish Government is already committed to the development of understanding of our own intangible cultural heritage. Museums Gallery of Scotland provided advice during the consultation process for the development of Scotland's first uh, historic environment strategy called Our Place in Time. It was published in uh, March 2014 as comments to the intangible aspects of heritage and actually defines the historic environment broadly as, and uh, I quote, the physical evidence for human activity that connects people with place linked with the associations we can see, feel and understand. So that is the Scottish approach to how we should see historic environment. I hope um, that those uh, visitors from, from elsewhere recognise that within that, 
that sense of what we can see, feel, and understand, that intangible sense, is built into how we associate our definition of how we take forward our heritage and our historic environment in Scotland. So this definition, which was developed collaboratively by representatives from across the sector, addresses the broad range of meanings and values of the historic environment, how people respond to it. Indeed, the historic environment can to be the cultural heritage of places, and it's a combination of physical things, the tangible, and those aspects we cannot see, the stories, the traditions, and the concepts. And tangible evidence is essential to understanding the heritage value of a place, the evaluation of cultural significance. So we had a big debate, I remember, uh, when we were discussing the strategy about, yes, it's about the places, the built environment, but what people are really interested in is the people, the people that were associated with the places, and what the people felt then, what they tell us now, and how we interpret that. And we had quite an interesting discussion at the time, uh, but very meaningful. At Bannockburn, uh, which is uh, near Stirling, for example, um, there are no physical man-made features existing from the time of that famous battle of over 700 years. Archives and historical documents uh, combined with a few artefacts provide evidence of the iconic event. So although not physically part of the historic environment, such evidence is critically important to it and is therefore acknowledged in the broad definition set out in our place and time. Those of you who can visit that amazing visitor attraction got an award uh, last week for being the best visitor attraction in the whole of the UK is about telling stories and interpretation. In embracing the intangible, this new definition is in line with the experiential and perceptual concepts that underline the European Convention definition of landscape and with the broad definition of the intangible cultural heritage in the 2003 UNESCO Convention of the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage. And I want to say something also about uh, the role and the impact of this area. Tackling social justice and reducing inequalities is also a key focus. My view is there is much more that we can do to promote the power of intangible culture to engage communities and actually to tackle inequalities and perceptions or misperceptions in the world of today of the power and the powerless. Uh, I hope this is one of the many issues that you'll be discussing today and I'm very interested to hear your views. But in a world where people have got so much disconnectedness from either their immediate surroundings or elsewhere, where that sense of resilience and strength comes from who they are and a definition of where they are, intangible cultural heritage gives people a real anchor um, and a real strength. And if we want to build resilient uh, communities, we need resilient individuals. And resilient individuals are those that are confident in who they are, where they've come from and what they share. And be open to change and challenge to understand other people think as well. So I wanted to finish by thanking Museums Gallery Scotland, Traditional Arts and Culture Scotland, who's made this event possible. I'd like to also thank all those intangible cultural heritage practitioners, professionals from the sector and the academics that are here today to contribute and inform the development of the intangible cultural heritage. And of course the NGS staff who have been involved in the preparations of today's event and I think very creatively have put you in the old uh, Dick Veterans College, the veterinary college, where the veterinary students from the university just dissect bodies of animals but will not go there so early in the morning. Um, so this conference presents a unique opportunity for all presents to share knowledge, address some of the important issues, forge new collaborative partnerships, contribute to further development of research um, on these most important aspects of our cultural heritage. But I think as the Cabinet Secretary responsible for, for culture in Scotland, I also think I can use my authority to charge you with keeping our stories alive. Thank you very much. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary, for those uh, strong words of support for what we're trying to achieve today, and I hope it inspires you in the debate later on this afternoon in our discussions and thinking. And we very much appreciate the time you've taken out of your busy schedule today. The Cabinet Secretary will have to leave um, this morning, so she'll slip away, but um, I'm sure she'll be following proceedings um, both today and the legacies from today. So I'm <clears throat> very pleased now to welcome Rita May Hyde from UNESCO, who's bringing some words directly from Paris. She had to get a very special dispensation to be here today, as it's UNESCO's General Assembly. So we're very appreciative that she's been able to come. <laughs>
Madam Cabinet Secretary for Culture, Europe and External Affairs. Those were indeed very inspirational uh, remarks. CEO, Museums Gallery Scotland, Ms. Joanne Orr, keynote speaker, Dr. Janet Blake, and all other distinguished presenters, their participants, practitioners, and online listeners. It gives me great pleasure and honor to be here with you to represent the Intangible Cultural Heritage Section and UNESCO at this pertinent time as we embrace the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and work hand in hand to realize the future we want for all. Here with you today, I did not come single-handedly. I bring with me the greetings of Cecile Duvel, the Chief of the Intangible Cultural Heritage Section and the Secretary of the Convention, and Ms. Suzanne Schnutgen, the Chief of the Capacity Building and Heritage Policies Unit of the Intangible Cultural Heritage Section, both of whom regret not being able to be here with you today. Enormous thanks to Museum Gallery Scotland for the organization and hosting of this symposium for everyone, the role of living culture in identities and sustainable community development. I believe it is the first event of this kind um, to be held in Scotland, and that deserves our commendation. Accredited to the Intergovernmental Committee for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage in 2011, we, are, we also note the solid contribution of Museum Gallery Scotland in the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage and the groundbreaking work, of course, of online inventoring of ICH in Scotland. When the Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage was adopted by UNESCO's General Conference in 2003, the international community accepted the revolutionary notion that intangible cultural heritage was no longer something to be identified, documented, cataloged, categorized, and archived by external experts, as had been done for centuries by folklorists, musicologists, ethnologists, and others, but was instead something that could only be correctly valued and adequately safeguarded by its own communities. Just 12 years later, more than 160 state parties, 163 to be precise, have ratified the convention, which is grounded, and we believe that its success has to do with the fact that this convention is grounded in that of community and sustainable development. As a primary core, communities are indeed the lifeblood of the convention. Intangible cultural heritage concerns, as, as was uh, explained by the cabinet uh, minister, practices, representations, expressions, knowledge, as part of the cultural heritage transmitted from generation and generation, intangible cultural heritage is in no way a thing of the past, frozen in time, but rather a living heritage that evolves and adopts progressively to changes made by communities and groups in response to their environment, their interaction with nature, and their history. We can therefore see living heritage as the DNA that creates and recreates the identity of communities and groups the world over. The concept of sustainable development is at the heart of the Convention for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage, whose preamble recognizes the importance of the intangible cultural heritage as a mainspring of cultural diversity and a guarantee of sustainable development. The definition of intangible cultural heritage in the convention stipulates that consideration will only be given solely to such intangible cultural heritage that is compatible with existing international human rights instruments, as well as with the requirements of mutual respect among communities, groups, and individuals, and of sustainable development. The 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development constitutes a plan of action, 
addressing the three dimensions, economic, social, and environmental, of sustainable development through 17 sustainable development goals as highly inter interdependent spheres of action that inform development pathways at all levels and respecting the three fundamental principles of human rights, equality, and sustainability. The importance of cultural diversity for sustainable development is highly recognized throughout this document and a specific target is dedicated to strengthening protection efforts and cultural heritage preservation. UNESCO's effort in the post-2015 process were successful. We now have a new solid base of commitment of states for the integration of culture and heritage in the integration of culture and therefore of intangible cultural heritage in the development and to continue the support of UNESCO in the implementation of the convention. It is therefore timely that a revised draft operational directives with a new chapter on intangible cultural heritage and sustainable development will be presented at the 10th session of the Intergovernmental Committee for the Safeguarding of the Intangible Cultural Heritage, which clarifies and strengthens the link between intangible cultural heritage and sustainable development. Intangible cultural heritage can effectively contribute to sustainable development along each of its three dimensions, as well as to the requirement of peace and security as fundamental prerequisites for sustainable development. Inclusive social development cannot be achieved without sustainable food security, quality health care, education for all, inclusive social protection systems, and gender equality. Human societies have constantly developed and adapted their intangible cultural heritage, including knowledge and practices concerning nature as well as social practices in order to address fundamental needs and social issues across time and space. Traditional health practices, food waste, water management practices, social gatherings, celebrations and knowledge transmission systems play essential roles for communities to achieve inclusive social development. Environmental sustainability requires ensuring a stable climate sustainably managing natural resources and protecting biodiversity. Traditional knowledge, values, and practices accumulated and renewed across generations as part of intangible cultural heritage have guided human societies in their interactions with the surrounding natural environment for millennia. Today, the contribution of intangible cultural heritage so environmental sustainability is recognized in many fields such as biodiversity conservation, sustainable natural resources management, and rural disaster preparedness and response. As a living heritage, the body of knowledge, values, and practices of intangible cultural heritage related to environment has the capacity to evolve and adapt for a more sustainable use of natural resources when necessary, permitting communities to better face natural disasters and the challenges of climate change. Sustainable development depends upon stable, equitable, and inclusive economic growth based on sustainable patterns of production and consumption. This requires productive and decent employment, reduction of poverty and inequalities, low carbon, as well as resource efficient economic growth and welfare protection, intangible cultural heritage constitutes, therefore, an important asset for this transformative change. It constitutes a driving force for economic development, encompassing a diversity of productive activities with both monetary and non-monetary value and contributes in particular to strengthening local economies. As a living heritage, it can also constitute an important source of innovation in the face of change and help achieve inclusive economic development at the local and international levels. 
towards realizing the goals and future we want for all, UNESCO welcomes continued partnership with relevant stakeholders such as governments, communities, academic institutions, and non-governmental organizations, etc., in the safeguarding of intangible cultural heritage. I look forward to the illuminating presentations and discussions that will emerge surely from the experts that are gathered here today. I'm also very eager to see the performance of the Galoshians and all the other per, uh, entertainers and practitioners, storytelling. Uh, we had a few mentioned by Madame Kevinette, secretary here. And so I am very pleased to see these performances. And I know that it will give me just a taste of some of the richness of the living heritage of Scotland. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you.